Delirium is an acute deterioration in mental functioning which commonly occurs as a result of acute medical illness such as urinary tract infection or pneumonia, sometimes through the side effects of drugs or sometimes from trauma such as a hip fracture. Delirium is very common in hospitals. It affects around one in eight hospital inpatients at any given time and the rates are far higher in older people and in certain populations such as the intensive care unit. And despite the fact that it's very common, it's under-recognised with typically only 20 or 30 percent of patients being formally identified. It's a very variable condition. Sometimes patients are agitated, walking around, aggressive, and these patients are easy to recognise. There is a little bit of overlap with that with some patients with dementia who, who wander around, but delirium, the change is acute. What's often missed though is what we call hypoactive delirium and that's when a patient is withdrawn and quiet and perhaps a bit apathetic and difficult to speak to and engage in conversation. And I'm not talking about patients who are in a coma or who are unresponsive, but sometimes these patients with hypoactive delirium can be very sleepy and will hardly even look at you when you talk to them. And it's very important to recognise those patients as well as the agitated ones. Once you've excluded physiological disturbance, the next phase of delirium care as I see it is to look at all the potential triggers. And this is a complex process. The Scottish Delirium Association has done a comprehensive pathway which you might like to refer to. But basically what you're trying to do is find all the different things that may have upset the patient's brain. Another very important part of this is to look at the patient experience as well because delirium is very distressing and you want to try and relieve that distress as much as possible. This involves talking to the patient, providing reassurance, trying to look for triggers such as pain or thirst or urinary retention that may have triggered the delirium, but also speaking to the family to find out more about the patient, what the preferences are and so on, to see if there's anything you can say to them or change in the environment that makes them feel more comfortable. Providing good delirium care is virtually impossible without detecting it and labelling it. And this has been really the major hurdle, I would say, in getting good delirium care implemented in routine practice. Healthcare Improvement Scotland have greatly accelerated the process through encouraging use of standardised measures such as the 4AT. And I think very importantly, they're engaging with various health boards and practitioners to see which methods work. So this is an evolving process because the fact is that even though we've had lots of tools available for delirium detection, it hasn't really been implemented um, anywhere in the world until very recently. And I think the crucial difference now is the fact that we're engaging with clinicians and practitioners to work out in their organisations the best way of achieving this. I'm extremely encouraged by how far we've come. Really a lot has been done in the last two years. I think this is the product of the collaboration between the Scottish Delirium Association and other interested clinicians in Healthcare Improvement Scotland. And we're now seeing the results in terms of very positive reaction from all the different test sites, from the clinicians who are using the tools, right all the way up to the chief executives. And I think one of the reasons why we've had such a positive reaction is that this consistent and coherent set of tools is addressing what anybody working in the front lines knows is an unmet medical need. But in the past we just haven't had this consistent and clear approach to dealing with it. We now need to move forward, building on what's been achieved already, to implement the use of the detection tools in the time bundle in other sites. We want to measure our performance along the way and make changes as required.